In today's video, you're gonna learn how to make a sports graphics bumper inside of Cinema 4D. Let's go. Hey everybody, it's Nick here again from grayscalegorilla.com, bringing you the tools, training, and tutorials to help make you a better motion designer. Now today we have a fun tutorial inside of Cinema 4D, but before we get started, I wanted to remind you of our intro to Cinema 4D series. If you are just getting started with Cinema 4D or wanted to learn parts of Cinema 4D that you haven't really jumped into yet, check out our absolutely free training over at our website. We're gonna link it up down below and also right here on YouTube so be sure to check that out all right let's get into today's tutorial today's video is all about making this sports graphics bumper inside of cinema 4d from scratch we're gonna be animating it lighting it putting the particles inside we're even gonna head into after effects toward the end of this tutorial and do some of the post work and compositing as well so if you've ever wanted to see an entire project from start to finish Make sure you follow along with this one. I had a lot of fun making this one. So let's jump on in and let's get started. First thing we need to do is get a baseball. Now, uh, I know I've showed you this a few times in other tutorials, but uh, we have stuff in the content browser uh, that are models that we can use. And, and this I just found this out yesterday, actually, the visualize. So I've, I've showed you guys the broadcast 3D objects, right? And you have all these 3D models in here. But a little side note, Visualize, uh, if, again, if you, this, you, you only have this if you have the broadcast, um, let, me, let me make this clear. If you have the broadcast version of cinema, you have this. Um, and if you have the studio version or the visualized version, you have this. Okay, now if you have visualize or studio, you're gonna open this up, you're gonna go to objects, and then you have a whole nother set of, of uh, models that you can play with. These are more architectural stuff. These are furniture and buildings and um, uh, bathtubs and plants and stuff like that. So this is more for architectural stuff. But we're not going to do that today. We're, uh, sorry, it's kind of jumping all over the place. Uh, let's head back into broadcast, go to 3D objects, go to sports, and thank you whoever modeled this baseball because it looks great. Uh, the texturing, we, we need to do a lot to the texturing, but the baseball itself, these it's got these nice little seams. It kind of tucks into itself here. Let's just do a basic render of the baseball. This is what we're starting with. Uh, believe it or not, the baseball you see in the animation is the, this exact baseball, but with a lot of tweaks and a lot of uh, texture updates and some lighting and all that good stuff. So let's take this guy and turn it into what, what we saw. Uh, the first thing we need to do is get rid of that logo. Now, you can you can keep that. You can keep this Your Logo Here thing. You can actually go into the Your, your Logo Here alpha, right? And then open this up and hit uh, Edit Image. And then you should be able to um, edit that image and then uh, you can actually put your logo on the ball if you want. In this case, I'm just gonna Kind of basically turn it off and I'm actually going to delete it from our object so let's go up to our baseball and go to find this thing it's uh this logo I think it's this uh, it was blue alpha but I think I just turned off everything so it's just that black texture there or in your case it'll be that blue uh your logo here stuff just get rid of it uh unless you want to use it in this case I just wanted a generic ball we didn't need a logo on it so that's what we ended up with Okay, what do we do from here? Well, we started play with the textures, and uh, the ball has um, this kind of bump texture on it. Uh, and frankly, you know, I'm, I don't know baseball very well, but this seemed to be uh, not the look I was going for. I wanted a more kind of dirty, um, bumpy look. And uh, so what I ended up with is going in and adding a noise instead of the tile. So I added a noise and you hit hit render and that's already looking a little bit better. But of course, doing textures without lighting um, is always pretty tough. Uh, so let's get a basic kind of light situation going just so we can kind of get our, um, our uh, textures looking the way we want. And I, I, I say this all the time, but you know, textures and lighting always go together. Uh, the, the textures look the way they do because they're lit a certain way and the lights look the way they do because they're reflecting off textures. So they're really uh, buddies in, in, in 3D. You have to treat them, um, uh, you have to raise them together, I guess, if we're going with the, with the children metaphor. 
So let's get, um, first of all, some uh, something to reflect in the scene. As always, I'm going to use my um, HDRI Studio Pack, which uh, if I just add the HDR Studio Rig, and uh, I'm actually just going to add the seamless floor as well just to get our background and turn off our floor because we just want the background. By adding the Studio Rig, now we can add uh, some reflections to our uh, baseball and now when we add reflections, uh, let's add a Fresnel shader and kind of tone this way, way down. And now when we add reflections, we're getting um, the reflections from our scene. And now we're going to be able to see kind of how this dude is, is being lit. Um, one last thing for the lighting, just to get ready, we actually haven't lit the scene yet. Uh, this is still all the basic default flat on camera lighting. So let's add a softbox and let's get that nice rear kind of rim softbox lined up just so we could see our texture. Um, in this case, I'm going to use the softbox from the light kit. And this is uh, right here. And let's just zoom out. And first thing we need to do is either scale up the ball or shrink down the softbox. In this case, I'm going to scale up the ball. Um, all the objects in that or most of the objects in that content browser are, are made to scale, which means this baseball is itty bitty teeny itty bitty so let me show you if you add a cube there's the baseball inside of a normal cube you can see how little bitty this guy is um and uh, for me unless i unless i need something very specific i you know scale you know for dynamics and stuff is important and scale is important for a lot of stuff but in this case i know that it's just going to be this ball rotating around we're not using any dynamics or anything so i'm just going to move it up just to be able to to, to grab it a little bit easier. Um, and here's uh, getting rid of our cube, and it's also making our softbox a, a more correct scale. So let me grab the softbox, just position this kind of in a rim kind of area. I'm gonna shrink up the distance just so it's not so far away. And then I'm gonna get some rendering going on, and now we're, now we're getting somewhere. So we have our reflective baseball, which doesn't look great right now, way too reflective, right? But now we're seeing some of the parts kind of come in. So let's go tweak that uh, ball texture and really dial it in. In this case, I'm gonna use the interactive render region, which is either Alt-R, or you can just pull it on right here, and then this will um, continue rendering as we tweak stuff. So first of all, let's dial this reflection way back. Um, I I tend to steer toward reflection instead of specular because reflection is real. Uh, specular is a fake of of these kind of things. Uh, getting reflections and even blurry reflections like we're going to do, let's go ahead and add like 10% blurry reflections, is this gets you more realistic to the way that um, things behave in real life. Everything has reflections. The only, the only reason we see an object is because it's reflecting light back to us. Um, so using the reflection channel instead of the specular channel, which I'll just shut off right now, um, is a good way, it's a good start to get more realistic or at least more uh, visually appealing objects. Now, me, maybe I go overboard with reflections, but I, that's, you know, that's my tool. That's my tool. That's my little hammer that I hit uh, and use all the time. Okay, so I'll stop gabbing. We have our, our uh, baseball here. Let's turn up our softbox just to get that real nice white hot spot over here. Okay, we're looking a little bit better. Um, and again, with the reflections, we really need to tone it down. It's really a subtle, subtle thing here. Uh, and the blurriness can go a long way into kind of diffusing that um, reflection. So the bump is also going a long way in diffusing it, but our bump is too big. Our bump is kind of like too big and lumpy. Um, what we could do is just scale it down. So I'm going into my noise and I'm going to my global scale and I'll go to like 50. And right there, you can see right away, we're getting a more kind of textured, more fine detail looking ball. And let's add another light here just so we could start to see the front texture. We, we do have this nice rim light, which I like and which I want to keep, maybe even turn it up. but. It, we need something for the front. You see how this is kind of falling off into darkness? We have a little light here, but this is really just a reflection of our um, HDR studio. Uh, let's pull up just a real basic light. I don't think we need shadows or anything. Let's just pull up a light and kind of grab it and pull it out in front. 
So we're just going to grab the uh, uh, the Z axis here, pull it out front and up and over and maybe even toward the camera a little bit more and, and to the side. Now this this light is going to be our uh, kind of kind of fill light in this case, or, or I guess, I don't know what you would call this. This would be the rim. This would be our key, I guess. I don't know, but it's really toned down and it's really, really orangish. Um, I don't know how I ended up on this orange other than it looked really nice. I toned it way, way down. And I got this nice little kind of highlight here, little, little um, warmth on the ball. And uh, this helps sell that, this, uh, this ball quite a lot. Let me grab this and move it over even further. Just, I'm just adding a little bit of detail for the front, just so it's not falling off into nothing. The other thing is our background. Again, um, you know, I jump all over the place. I rarely stay on one object. Let's jump to our background, and uh, it's probably easier to follow along if I actually stayed doing one thing, but you know, that's just not the way my brain works. Uh, sorry, guys. Let's grab our seamless floor and dump it down and get our colors right. So we want this kind of bluish, dark, blue why you know because this is what i remembered on tv um you know i just rem remember this kind of pale blue faded pale blue kind of look um that, that's even too saturated you know it's really faded really pulled back and instead of a circular gradient maybe it's like a i think it was like a diagonal thing where it just kind of pulled across and all right we're getting somewhere it was also like cut off on the edge so let's line that up and make sure that we're getting the right look on our ball and it looks like our light, uh, let's add a camera so we can come back to this scene. Um, uh, it looks like our light needs to be just pulled over a little bit, maybe pulled out. Grab the wrong one. There we go. Okay, camera. And we're back. All right. And all right. We're constantly going to tweak this stuff as we go. But we have our baseball texture. We have... Um, we have uh, our light. In fact, it's getting a little bit bright now. Let's turn down our softbox. And let's texture our ball more. We have a lot of work to do on this. Next thing we do is add a little bit of reflection also to the thread. Um, so really, really subtle here. I'm just literally adding you know, 1 or 2%. And I'm also um, uh, turning off the specular and uh, maybe even raising that reflection just a bit and cranking the blurriness now because this is thread right this is the threads don't have like this real glossy reflection they have this really dull reflective uh, re reflectivity that's pulling in all the reflections and the light from the scene and again everything has reflection uh, a little bit goes a long way you can see just that much let's zoom in and maybe we could see what the difference is there are stitches this is without really flat and kind of lifeless. This is with really um, pulls in some of that light and some of the, the colors from around the scene. I think that's going to help, especially when it starts rotating around. Okay, where do we go from here? Well, uh, I'm going to turn turn us around a little bit more and try to get more kind of rim light on this dude. Just kind of get our composition together as well. All right, where do we go from here? Well, the texture itself we're probably going to tweak more. Uh, let's go ahead and do that now. Um, our bump in our bump channel is just kind of, it, it, let me turn up the resolution here. It's just a little flat. It's um, kind of too even. And what I'm trying to do is make a more kind of varied look. In this case, what I'm going to try is using a filter. Um, uh, not filter, but uh, fusion. So with our bump uh, channel on, if you turn on Fusion, it's going to make a new channel with our old noise in it already. And then it's going to ask us to, to add a blend channel. The blend channel, we can also make noise. Okay. And then we're going to blend it using one of these things. Okay. So first of all, let's make our noise. This is our new noise here. In this case, let's just pick something kind of that looks a little bit more interesting, maybe a little more like a leathery look or something. And let's head back into our bump and you maybe overlay these two together. Okay, so now we're trying to get a more interesting pattern based on um, this new look. Okay, so let's see what that did. And uh, it didn't do a ton. Let's go in and 
crank up the scale on this a little bit more. And that is a little better. Let's do a full res render and see what that see what that looks like. Um, still, still needs a lot of work. What I think it really needs is that dirt kind of feel to it. So let's go in and uh, go to Diffusion. Now Diffusion is nice because you can add in a channel or noise or anything that not only affects the, the luminance uh, and the specular, but also the reflection. So if you imagine we have this nice, bright, shiny uh, ball when it comes out of the box, as soon as it gets dirt on it, not only will that dirt um, kill off the brightness of the white, right? It'll add like a physical dirt, but it'll also affect reflection, uh, which means, you know, imagine you had a, a nice shiny sphere and you put dirt on it. Well, where that dirt is, it not only makes it darker, but it also reduces the reflection or it gets rid of it. So we can add basically a dirt layer into our diffusion to give that look. And this goes a long way in help selling this, this ball here. So let's go to diffusion. Let's turn it on. And in this case, I found a dirty uh, piece of drywall uh, uh, around the. Uh, I won't tell. I won't tell you where it is, uh, but it's in the office here. It's just a old, dirty piece of drywall, and um, uh, and this is what I took. So it had like little marks on it. It had these little dots all over it, and uh, I thought this might work pretty well for the ball. And I just walked over. Uh, I took a shot of it, and I used the uh, the photo stream on iPhoto. So literally, like, you know, 30 seconds later, it has done its photo stream thing, and it's in iPhoto, and I could just pick it up and drag it and use it. And uh, I've been using um, my iPhone to capture little textures like this a, a ton lately. So let's grab it. Uh, let's open it up into our uh, shader. I'm going to say, no, I don't need you to bring it into the scene here. And let's look at our ball now, and let's, uh, let's just pull it out. Um, into the editor here a little bit further just so we can see what's going on. And let's talk about um, our diffusion channel. So our diffusion channel, what we could do is go, uh, first of all, go into it. And what I wanna do is just make it a lot brighter. I want that 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 uh, kind of bluish white there, I want that to go all the way to white. And where white is, it won't be affecting our object at all, okay? I'm gonna rotate around just so we can see our texture a little bit better. But what we need to do is darken up the dirt. It's not dark enough, so we can go to our black point and we could crank it. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. Now we could look at this ball here, and you can see we're getting these nice, uh, these nice kind of dirty patches. Uh, let's just zoom in and see what we have here. Okay, so that is getting close, but you can see it's tiled. The way that the texture was originally mapped onto our baseball we're getting these weird tiles okay let me sh let me see if I could show you really obviously if I crank up um, if I crank this up and make it really dark in the corners uh, I'm gonna try to show you the tiling okay now you can see it so now you can see we're actually tiling um, this texture and that's not what we want we want this texture to kind of wrap around our object well that means we have to change the way that it's projected so if we go into our um, our uh, baseball here and we click on that texture, it's going to be on uh, uh, the uh, UVW mapping by default because this is the way it was originally mapped. Well, what, what we want is spherical. If we change this, and don't forget to change the other ones, we have this mapped three times here, change these all to spherical. And you're going to see a little bit change, but not a ton. What we really need to do is go to our um, percentages down here. Instead of 10%, we want to go to 100%. So what 10% was doing was was um, it was making tiled that texture 10 times around our object. And that's not what we want. We want it just kind of mapped on flat, right? So now we're getting closer, but now you can see we, it's way too dark and way too grimy. Uh, we just cranked it too dark because of because we wanted to see the tiling so if we pull that black point back a little bit and find that find the place where it starts to look a little dirty but not too much pull it back a little bit from there okay that looks pretty good now I like this but I don't like these little dots so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to back out of here and I'm gonna make it a little bit blurry 
you know, just kind of add, that's way too much, maybe 3%, 4% blurry. So now we're starting to get little little dots and little little dirt marks all over our ball there. And this is uh, looking better already. So let's get back to where we were and see if we can't keep tweaking. Um, from here, the next thing that catches my eye is that reflection is just still too much. Uh, it's looking like a, like a, like, I don't know, like a, like a, one of those heavy, heavy uh, balls you throw around at the gym. What are those called? I don't know. Uh, anyway, so let's go to our reflection. Let's, let's uh, turn it down and see if we can't get a little bit more, um, maybe bump in there also to diffuse that reflection and to make it a little bit more dirty. And uh, that's looking a little bit better. Okay. So let's let's stick with this, and w again we may go back and tweak, and uh, and that's okay. But I think for now, uh, I think we're ready to start adding some dirt and to kind of flesh this uh, flesh this comp out a little bit. Uh, from here, I want to turn that softbox off. It is in the scene. It is in my way. I want it to uh, continue to light. I just don't want to see it. So, in the softbox, at the bottom, you can see it has a scene by camera. We can just turn that off. And then now it won't render. And I'm actually thinking I may turn it up a little bit again just to pop that whiteness on the corner. All right. Not bad. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, I still think we have a little bit of work to do on the ball. But like I said, let's move forward. I think we have to re-go back and tweak this texture. Um, but let's go ahead and add the dirt, and then we'll go back and, uh, and fix the rest of it. So let's add... Uh, let's turn off our interactive render region and let's add the, uh, let's turn off our camera. Let's start adding the dirt. So the dirt was made with the landscape um, object. And so I just grab a landscape object. And then what you could do with the landscape object is hit spherical. And if we zoom out far enough, you can see we have this little planet, right? It's this little kind of curly planet. And then we could shrink it way down you know, dirt sized. Uh, let's just go like five centimeters or whatever. And then we can also shrink the outside of it way down. So now you can see where you, you now you can see why I made that ball a lot larger because we have to deal with some really teeny little tiny particles here. And if we make it too large, we're going to have to start putting like 0.1 and stuff in here. And that could just be um, tedious at a certain point. If you could save yourself a key command uh, early by scaling things up, it's not a bad idea. So here's our dirt. What's wrong with this dirt? It's, a, it's, too, it's got too many segments, first of all. So let's just kind of dumb this dirt down a little bit. We just need kind of a, a little rounded little shape that doesn't really have any sharp corners. You can see we're still seeing like little sharp corners. We just need like a little, you know, lump of dirt. So one thing we could do is in the Fong tag is turn on the angle limit and crank it up. And so now we're going to get this kind of more rounded shape. It's going to be really hard to, to get these sharp, sharp angles. The other thing we could do is make a new material, uh, well, create new material and drag it on there. And let's start to create like a little bit of dirt material. And we're way too close to that thing. This thing is going to be this big, right? So that's our dirt. What do we do to our dirt? First of all, we make it brownish. Now, brown, brown's weird, man. Brown is not a color that you see in the in like the rainbow, right? But brown is kind of this reddish, like darkish red, you know, because up here you get this, you get you start to get like a pale kind of red, right? Brown is kind of this, and you know, I'm half colorblind, so don't don't trust me, but like here's this is this is where I get my brown. It's kind of like a like a mostly red, a little bit green, and not much blue, and that's 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 kind of the brown. Uh, brown's weird, man. Anyway, that's our brown. Okay, we're getting better. Let's add a little bit of luminance and also add a little bit of brown uh, and tone it down. And this way, it's gonna be almost give it like a subsurface scattering kind of see through effect that dirt has, where it's uh, it's not you know it's not. Um, uh, it, it dense sometimes. Sometimes it's a little got cracks in it and you can see through it and got all this stuff. So we can use this luminance to kind of fake a little bit of subsurface scattering, I guess, on this dirt where we don't actually need to turn it on because it's so teeny tiny. Okay. One piece of dirt down. 
let's make multiple pieces of dirt so that we can fly it around and it won't look so monotonous. If we just have one piece of dirt that we clone and, and put in an emitter, it's going to be obvious. So let's make some different shapes and sizes. Let's duplicate it, move it over. And in this case, let's change the segments. Let's change the, the scale of things here and just start to play around with some of these settings and you know, not go too crazy. You don't want to make a, a, a totally huge or totally small piece, but in a, in a sense you want, you know, different scales, different sizes, different shapes. We could even bake one of these out. Let's say we bake this small one out. I'm going to hit C to make it editable. And then I'm going to grab the scale object and just make it not round. So now, now we have a, like a long piece of dirt. We have a, um, kind of small one and a large one. And maybe we need more. Uh, let's grab one more and move it over. And uh, there we go. And duplicate it. And maybe this one's real kind of flat. And uh, I don't know. Play around here. We'll just get this little triangly looking dude. And hopefully those are. That's way too. That's way too pointy. Okay, cool. So now we got dirt. We got four little pieces of dirt that we're going to clone and fly out of an emitter to make it look like dirt's coming off this thing. So we go up to our um, simulate particles emitter and we drop our landscape objects into our emitter and we go to our emitter and say show objects and uh, we pull, we kind of zoom out again here and we hit play. So this emitter is throwing our dirt particles out away from our ball and this is what we want we, the only thing we want to change is the direction well it's not the only thing we want to change we want to change a lot about this we want to rotate it around and kind of have it come from uh, camera right the other thing we're going to do is grab the emitter and shrink it down so just so it's roughly you know the size of a baseball you know you don't want it flying from from anywhere else okay so there we go so we hit play and uh, so now we got dirt. Well, the problem here is the dirt's flying literally out of the baseball. So, and, it, and really, if you look at mine, there, there's still a couple little pieces of dirt um, that, that pop up, you know, every once in a while. Uh, but, or that pop through the ball every once in a while. But um, we can go, we can do a lot of things to uh, make sure that doesn't happen. The main thing we could do is just move it out away from the from the sphere here and we're cheating a little bit uh, and cheating's fine because this is motion graphics and not uh, poker um, so you can pull the dirt out in front of the ball so now it's gonna look if we go back to our camera it's gonna look like if we move it back it's gonna look like it's flying off the ball but really it's kind of flying in front of the ball right so that's one way to do it now we could set this up and get dynamics going and maybe put a little protection over the ball to make sure nothing hits it and in fact there might even be a particles deflector or something in here where we can actually make this uh, part of the particle system and say just don't be in here um, I didn't actually set that up maybe that's there maybe you could play around with that but this is how I set it up I had one set of particles up in front and then uh, I duplicated it and I put a set of particles in the back and uh, we actually set up a few of these. So before I go duplicating stuff, let's make this one look as good as we can and then we'll start to duplicate. So uh, first thing we need to do is go into the emitter and just make way more particles. Okay, so now we got a lot more dirt flying out, but uh, it's way too fast. So let's dial this back down to like maybe 50 or 30 or, you know, we can get really slow-mo with this. The way I approached it was this kind of like slow-mo, um, slow-mo ball rotating with like, you know, matrix dirt flying off of it. So let's, uh, let's go for that look. This looks fine. Let's extend our scene like, you know, maybe 300 frames or so, something like that. And um, we got our dirt. And the, here's, the, here's the problem now is our dirt stops. So we have to go to stop emission and crank that up to 300. The other thing to look at is each one of these pieces is flying out in the same speed. Um, and we don't want that. What we want is variation of speed. So if we go to variation, just crank this all the way up to 100, 
now we're going to get some particles that move fast, some particles that move slow, and in fact, I'm going to dial this even slower. And now you can see we got dirt. All right, yeehaw, dirt. Okay, so there's our dirt. Not looking too great. Um, but here's another reason it's not looking too great. They're all facing the same direction. So now we have to add some rotation. I'm just going to add like maybe, I don't know, 60. I just want them to rotate around. I don't want them to go too fast. If you crank it up too high, they're going to look like little asteroids or whatever. But, you know, maybe, I don't know, play around, right? 60. Let's see what that looks like. And I also don't don't want our speed variation to be 100% uh, because we're going to get some of these dudes that just hang out and do nothing. So I'm going to turn this down to like, you know, 90 something percent. And now we're going to get some that go fast and some that go slow. And maybe we have maybe we have too many particles now. So I'm just going to dial this back to like 20 and start over and see what we got. All right. So we got we got them rotating around. And remember, this is off camera. Here's the edge of our frame. So we're not going to be able to see these things being born. We're just going to see them being kind of flown out from the ball. Okay, so now uh, it's, a little, it's a little better. We still have a lot to do with the ball, but, you know, our dirt, we're getting stuff set up. We're not quite at the point where we're doing our final tweaks. One thing I could definitely know is we're turning this luminance way down. Oh, my backup disk is full. Uh, hi, Josh. Um, so th there, there's our dirt. There's our ball. Now we roughly have the, the emitter set up. Okay, so let's start duplicating it. And um, I'm going to duplicate the entire emitter. I'm going to call this one uh, back. Actually, I got to get in the practice of emitter, E-M-I-T-T-E-R, uh, e back. And uh, uh, this seems, man, now I'm blanking on who, who showed me this or what tutorial I was watching. Or somebody was like, name it, you know, this, and then name it wh what it is. Because you're used to seeing emitter you know, and this way you can, you can, you know what the thing is, but then you know what, where, where it is, man, I hope that made sense. All right. So now here's a meter back. Let's move this back. And also let's change our seed to something different so that we get a different, um, cl uh, cluster of, of dirt. Okay. So now we're going to go back to camera. So now you can see there's dirt flying off the back. There's dirt flying out the front. And uh, one last thing I did was I, I duplicated my emitter front and I scaled all of these up. So I made a secondary emitter front and I made these a lot larger. Okay. But then I made them go a lot slower, like way slow. And what these guys ended up doing were being like, these were like the big chunks of dirt. So you got the little guys that fly out fast and then you got the big chunks of dirt that go slow. And, oh, you know what? There's a specular channel on this stupid dirt. Oh, darn it. Turn that off. All right. Oh, man. So much better. Okay. So now we have our big chunks, and that's way too brown. I'm real scattered today. This is way too bright. Just darken it up. Darken it up. Darken it up. Let's also add a bump channel just in case it catches anything. We just add a lot of noise and really crank it, scale it way down, like five. Like this way we get this really nice little texture if it ever gets close. Not bad. Still got some tweaking to do, but we got our we got our dirt flying out. We got our big chunks. We got our little chunks, and we're starting to get a lot closer. All right, let's get the ball rotating. Okay, so let's get the ball. And what I used for this was the CS Tools Move Null, which um, uh, is always there when I need it, like like a like a warm hug. And it's it's uh, the CS Tools are so great. I have them in my um, my favorites. They're free tools. Uh, I have a lot of tutorials on these, and Chris is the man. So get 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 yourself some CS tools. Let's use the move null. Ba, 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 ba. All right. So we drag the move null in, and it actually the ball is in zero zero zero. The move null is in zero zero zero. It's so great. It's so perfect. Uh, all we have to do is make the baseball a child of the move null, and now they work together. You hit play, and holy crap, where the ball go? Well, the ball took off because the move null by default has position on. So if we just turn position off and we hit play, now we got rotation. Sweet. Um, so we have our H rotation, which is it, which is going the wrong way. We want it to go the other way. So let's just dial that in. 
make it go negative. Okay, so there's our rotation. And instead of having a perfectly orbiting ball like that, I added just a little bit of pitch rotation. Oh, I mean, way less than that, like 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 one or 0.5 or something like that. And even a little bit um, on the other axis as well. So now it's gonna rotate a little bit around and hopefully we're getting like a kind of a curveball thing going on. We get different sides of the ball. We got this whole thing. All right. Where do we go from here? First of all, our front large, those pieces are way too big. Let's scale those a little bit down. And there's way too many of them. So let's just knock that back like eight maybe. And, um, okay, so we got our different size dirt. And we're going to add a little bit of that luminance back in just so we could start to see some of that dirt. Okay, there we go. From here, maybe we add a little bit more of that front light. I'm really missing that kind of orangish light. Maybe I, maybe we make it really orange too. Turn it up. Turn it up. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Um, let's just add it like a little area shadow to that orange. I don't make it too crazy. But little shadows as the dirt goes by. Um, Shouldn't uh, shouldn't be too bad. All right, let's get on this baseball texture. Let's go to town here because that is not looking the way I want it to. Um, one way to uh, play with this is I think it's all in the bump. So if I turn off the bump, we have you know some dirt on the ball. We have uh, the cracks going around. We have all that stuff. I think our bump is just getting a little too finicky. So I'm gonna tone this down and I'm also gonna tone the actual bump down. So instead of like, you know, a lot, it's gonna be a, a little. Um, it's also projecting a little weird and maybe we got a little bit weird with our projection. If I zoom in, it's looking okay. Let me open this up and make sure we're okay. Um, let's just look at it from another angle, see what we get here. So the dirt, yeah, dirt's okay. Um, and the the bump, and eh, the bump's okay. Let's um, dial up. Uh, and let's, uh, you know what? I do this all the time, and I rarely do it in tutorials, but I'm going to show you. I mean, I, I want to show you how I work. And a lot of times I look at stuff and I go, that's just not looking the way I want it to. And I go, I just start over. Boom. Brand new noise. You know, crank it up. And I want to make sure this mapping is, is kind of the way I want it. So the mapping looks fine. It's a little stretched in areas, maybe like right here. But overall, I mean, that that's it's, it's doing the way I want it to. So now that we kind of start over, um, we can maybe get a different result. Because this, this is my theory on it. I'm talking a lot on this one. Sorry, guys. Sometimes you, 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 you're tweak, you tweak, you tweak, you tweak, you tweak, but the, the first button you clicked was the wrong button. But now you're just trying to like fix a bad habit or something instead of just like starting over. And that's where I feel like, okay, I'm just going to grab a new noise and I'm just going to pick like a totally new pattern. That's way too weird. Uh, and I remember, I swear I had picked the original kind of bump, but... I'm going to try out a few other ones just to see what we can get. So that already is looking better. That already looks more like a like a leather or whatever the heck they make a baseball out of. So cool, right? So we went back, we started fresh, and now we're at a point where I, th I think we're looking way better with that material. Uh, from here, I may want to play a little bit with the reflections, maybe pull a little bit more of them back in. And in this case, um, I like our reflections, but I think we have too many of them. Uh, we have this really singular light source here, and I think that showing all these reflections all over is just a little too much. So here, I'm gonna go into the studio rig, and instead of the default rig, which let's turn it on, seen by camera. So now you can see how bright this dude is. Let, let's move out, and you can see by default, that's our softbox. By default, there's a lot of reflections around in this scene. There's one up here, there's all these softboxes around. I want to limit that. So I'm going to go back into the content browser. I'm going to go into my my uh, HDRI uh, uh, studio pack, and I'm going to go into something like simple, and I'm going to find real simple lighting here um, instead of that really large, complicated one. So now you can see 
we have just a, a couple little soft boxes here. We have one there, we have one there, and then one over there. And this is gonna be a lot more delicate. The other thing, um, sorry, I'm off mic there, uh, sorry. The other thing to keep in mind is we want those in roughly the same direction as our light because we want our reflections to be roughly where our light is and to also kind of give us the right space. So, of course, our soft box is going to reflect, but we also want that um, the, the actual other reflections to be in a similar area. So that's actually, that, that looks a lot better. Um, okay. So that's good. What happened to our background? Our background disappeared because I turned on scene by camera. Let's turn that off. Let's look at our background and let's fix our background. Our background's way too bright. I want to darken this corner so it fades off into kind of a darkness. And now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, I was so worried, guys. Now it's looking good. Okay, so where do we go from here? We tweak. So next thing to, to think about, all the dirt is flying in like a straight line. It's coming out of that. Uh, it's coming out of that emitter, and it's going straight from where it came from. And there's no variation, right? What we want to do is add variations. So let's grab all three emitters, and let's go to the emitter tab and say angle horizontal. And if we start turning this up, let's go way too high, and then I'll show you what that what that means. So now you can see. It's coming out at different angles. So some things are going up, some things are going down, some things are going crooked. Um, and this is actually the horizontal angle, which is left and right. What we want is the angle on the vertical axis. And let's rewind. You can see now it's going up and down. So we want this to be actually zero. And we want our vertical to be high. And we want it to fly out. Now that's too much. Maybe something more like 20 is going to help. But now we're getting a little bit of variation. Some particles are flying up, some are going down, some are going straight. They're all generally going in the right direction. But now that's going to give us a little bit more uh, kind of realism on that, uh, uh, on the dirt flying out. Okay, last thing I'm seeing here, we got this kind of weird reflection. We need to rotate, uh, which we didn't finish doing. We need to rotate that studio rig. So we get rid of that rota the, this 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 kind of uh, weird reflection here. This reflection here we don't want. We want it to rotate around. So let's just rotate our rig around. And I'm just guessing maybe 90 degrees or something like that. That got rid of it. And now it, all the reflections are on the top and the side, which is where I think they look best. It's still maybe a little bit reflective. Let's turn up our um, our uh, blurriness. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. So where do we do? Where, what now? We need depth of field. And what I should have done is sw switch this over to physical render because that's going to give us a little bit more uh, realistic look on what our final version is going to look like. The standard and the physical render are similar in a lot of ways if you're not using global illumination and all that stuff. But if, you're, if we're going to do the final and physical, we might as well switch it over. We probably should have switched it over earlier. And now the physical render is going to show us um, what that's going to render. So what do we do now? We set up the, uh, let's set up the depth of field. Um, I still think we need some more light. So I'm going to go to my soft box and instead of turning it up and turning it up, I'm going to do uh, another thing, which is move it closer. Moving a light object uh, closer to your subject is going to make it brighter or uh, turning the light up will make things brighter. And that's giving us a nice little light wrap. Uh, and the other thing I want to do, eh, let's still turn it up. I want that white to really pop there. Okay. Lovely. Let's set up the let's set up the depth of field. I know I've done this in a few tutorials, but let's uh, do it again. Let's uh, turn off our camera and let's get our focus distance. You can see our focus distance is way off in nowhere. Um, we want the focus, and if we just grab it, we can move it back to where uh, it makes more sense. We want our focus to be on the ball. So we want our focus to be roughly, I don't know, halfway through the ball or a little bit closer. So, you know, so this stuff is in focus and then the ball rolls out of focus as it moves away from us. And then all the dirt in front of that lens is blurry. All the dirt in that in the plane is clear. And then all the dirt behind it is uh, dirty again or uh, blurry, I should say. So I'm going to rotate this emitter back and actually kind of tilt it toward our plane. And I'm also going to add a little bit of angle horizontal so it 
hopefully can fly, you know, into, uh, in and out of our, our uh, field of uh, focus. The other thing is that this dirt is flying through the ball, but we're not going to be able to see it because we're sitting in the front of the ball and the back, you know, that's just going to fly out there. Okay. Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? All right, so we got our we got our focus. Let's go to our render settings and go to uh, physical. Turn on depth of field. Come back and hit render. And uh, you're gonna say, "Where the heck's the depth of field, Nick?" And I'm gonna go. I will show you. The depth of field is uh, controlled by your f-stop, just like it is in a real camera. I think I have a full tutorial on how to set all this up, so you can go back and reference that one if you want to learn exactly what all this stuff means. Instead of me repeating myself. Basically, an f-stop, the lower you go, the wider the f-stop is, and the more depth of field you get. So just by dropping that down to one, and depending on the scale of your scene, this is where scale really matters, depending on the scale of your scene, you're going to get more or less depth of field. So, you know, go lower accordingly if you need to, or higher. So let's go way too high at first and see what we get. We get the edge of the ball blurry. We get the front of the ball blurry. We get our, we get our threads right here in focus in focus out of focus and we have dirt that is in and out of focus so let's let this kind of continue to render and same thing we have in focus parts of the ball we have out of focus parts of the ball i'm going to rotate this around and i'm actually going to grab our softbox and make it a little bit um less wide so i'm trying to get a little bit less light wrap around on that edge that's looking a little better. Okay, so we got our ball, and um, that red is just way too red. So now I'm getting uh, down to the little details that are just like bugging me, you know. Um, let's add a little bit more red back into it. So now we're now we're at the point where we're tweaking, right? We're seeing our final render. We keep hitting render. We see how it looks in with our lighting, with our depth of field, with our you know texture. You know that that bump still isn't still isn't perfect for me. I'm going to turn it way down, though. It was looking a lot better up high, wasn't it? I think what it really needs is that kind of fusion again. So let's add our fusion. And let's get a really little teeny guy, a little bit of noise. That that seems like a, a larger scale noise. Let's grab another one and really scale it down. You know, like 20 or uh, not relative. Global scale. Scale it down and head back into our fusion and maybe overlay it there we go and just dial it back i'm just trying to add a little bit of variation you know to get that texture looking the right way and um yeah it's still too high dial it back so it's always a back and forth with that texture and getting it just right playing around with it um the dirt also is um if we go back into our dirt, our diffusion shader, uh, we can go back into our um, our dirt here and maybe tone it down a little bit. Um, the other thing I wanted to do with the dirt was make sure that effect reflection was on. Um, and what this uh, this is going to do what we talked about earlier, which is get rid of some of the reflection where it got where it gets dirty. Um, the other thing is maybe our dirt can be scaled up. So let's go into our ball and you know, we're again, we're at the point now where the scene is built and like most things, especially my type of tutorials, the actual building of what we're doing is simple. You know, we, you, we've seen the emitters before, you know, maybe there's a little trick or whatever on, you know, some of the things you guys saw, but really what takes the time on this stuff is all the little tweaks that make it look better. And this is where you can sit and play with the exact scene file, uh, but change it drastically um, by making those little 10, 20% changes over and over and over and over again. We're going to hopefully uh, make this more and more realistic. So for me, this little, these little dots didn't turn out the way I really hoped they would. Uh, maybe a better dirt map would help here. But what I'm going to try, and uh, this is on the fly, so I don't know... Um, uh, well, I guess like most stuff, this is on the fly. Hopefully this works. I'm going to open up the baseball. I'm going to select our texture maps for that baseball. And I'm going to turn the length U to 200. And that's going to kind of scale that texture up. 
and it's going to give us hopefully bigger dirt marks. There we go. Okay, so too dark, too dark. So let's um, let's in this case just tone it down. That's not doing anything. We need to tone it down here. Keep that all the way up and just tone it down. Make sure it doesn't fall to black, but it still looks dirty. Uh, it's a little better. Maybe less uh, maybe less blurriness. Get a little bit sharper. And what else can we do here? Uh, I think the main thing is like that light fall off is still kind of bugging me. So I'm just going to rotate our camera a little bit. And every time we rotate our camera, we have to make sure that our ball is in focus still. Because if we move our camera, our, our focus plane is going to move with it. So uh, let's go back to our camera and make sure it's lined up. Looks like we didn't do too much damage there. It looks okay. And it uh, looks like our front light is a little bright, so let's tone that down. And uh, let's, uh, let's pick another frame here, maybe with some different stitching. We're going to see different parts of this. And, um, you know, not, not bad, not great. I wish that looked a little bit more like, uh, like my original did. Uh, I'm going to take one more stab at it with this, um, with this strength. And I think it actually looked better without our fusion you know, kind of cranked up bump. And this looked more like a, like a, like a leather kind of thing. That looks way better than, than, uh, whatever I did to it. So, uh, there we go. So we got our light lighting here. We have our orange light lighting the front. We have our depth of field going on with our dirt. And what do we do from here? Well, we render it out. So we have our, our dirt kind of flying out. What I did was I extended this way out. I think I rendered 600 frames and I went boom like this and just let it go and go and go. And I also had to go into the emitters and make sure it was emitting for the entire 600 frames instead of 300. Turn that up to 600. And so now we have and you could probably do like a play blast style render from here. So you go to like uh, software render uh, let's just keep it small for now and I'm going to go all frames. Okay. And now when I hit render, it's going to say, you sure you want to render is not a real render. And I go, yes. And then it's going to kick out. Uh, let me shrink this down. It's going to kick out a really, really fast play blast version of our animation. So now we can check things like timing, you know, is the ball rotating fast enough or too, or, or, uh, is it too slow? Uh, is the dirt, you know, look realistic? We have our dirt flying out here. Um, and we could just check out, you know, the timing of the animation. So we're, we're not getting any lighting really, you know, everything's got boxes flying around it, but we're getting this, we're getting this, uh, preview of, of our animation that we can make some decisions. Um, so maybe we could tweak some stuff, you know, maybe it's okay. I, maybe there's too many of these big pieces coming out. We could maybe tone that down, but if we're generally happy, if we're ready to go, we set this up to render and we go. So, uh, for my final render, I, uh, went on the physical, I saved it out, uh, saved my output out to a file and, uh, I rendered a 16 bit, uh, channel TIFF. And uh, I rendered it 1280 by 720, and I said all frames, and I started rendering this dude out. Okay, so um, that is basically the cinema stuff. So here's our here's our kind of final frame, one frame of it. We got our baseball, we got our stitches, we got our dirt, we got everything flying out, we got our animation ready to go. So from here, you render it out. All right. Uh, let's head into After Effects, and I'll show you how I did the um, the 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 kind of time stretching and getting those like little ramps in and out of uh, of our system here. Don't think I have After Effects open, so I'm just gonna uh, open up After Effects here. Um, if I was smart, I would have had this ready to go for you guys, but we're gonna we're gonna open this up and get it going. Take a drink of water while we're loading. Wonderful. Let's uh, scale this to screen here. Let's go to uh, recent projects and uh, open the latest one. And we have baseball dirt. And uh, let's scale this down so it'll fit the screen here. All right. 
and uh, we could probably go half res just because um, because all right so here's our original render boom okay uh, in this case I think I think uh, there was no blur on our dirt map so maybe that maybe that would help our our uh, issue a little bit but here's our final render so we have our uh, we have our orange glow in the front here. We have our white uh, softbox kind of like um, glowing off the edge. We have the dirt particles flying around. And let me open this whole thing up. And let's go to the original and scale it down. And our original is just, you know, 600 frames of that, of just going on and on and on and on. Um, but what I did was I did a time remap. So let me actually pull this into a fresh comp and I'll show you the time remap separately from the rest of the effects. The time remap, um, again, if I just hit play, you're gonna see the dirt slowly kind of, you know, comes off the ball as it rotates and whatever, right? What I wanted was this to go really fast and then go slow, okay? And then ramp up at the end. And what that, to me, was I was trying to do was get that kind of replay look, you know, like, boof. you know, uh, if, if this was going to be in broadcast, it'd be like a really fast, like, whoosh, poof, you know, a few seconds and get some little time remapping in there and make sure there's some fancy sound effects like, poof, poof. okay, so time remapping, time remapping can get really weird, really fast. And um, I'll show you how I set it up. I'm going to try to make a little bit more room here. I'm just gonna turn off this crap because I don't need it for this uh, section. And uh, I think maybe I could squeeze this over. Just get more timeline so we can see what's going on. Two, get time remapping on. You hit Alt Command T. Now there's probably somewhere up here, you know, if we search through the layers, the time, uh, enable time remapping. There you go. Wow, I found it. I haven't been in this menu. In forever because I always remember this dude right there because I use time, time remapping a lot. Alt Command T pops up time remapping. Now, what time remapping does is it sets a keyframe for, for frame zero and it sets a keyframe for frame, you know, the last frame of the sequence, which is I think 600 or whatever, 22 seconds. What this allows us to do is squeeze these together. So now, if I just, you know, animate between those two, it's going to be a very high speed version of our animation, right? This is playing through very quickly. Well, what I want to do is I want to go fast for a period of time and then slow and not just slow, but I want to go real time. I want, I want the original timing in the middle here, somewhere around right there. Like when the dirt is kind of flying off right there, boom. And then we're going to play real time for maybe two, three seconds, and then we're gonna rush to the end. So the way we do that is we set up our keyframes kind of beforehand. So from here, we're gonna say from there, I'm gonna set a keyframe, which is this little triangle right here, add or remove keyframe, boom. Nothing has changed, okay? I'm just marking time, okay? If we move this, then things change, okay? But if we just leave it where it is, boom, that stays the same. So from here, for a few seconds, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe four seconds. This I want real time. Okay, and this is important. We need to preserve the distance between these two keyframes to make sure that um, to make sure that those this distance doesn't change, so the frame rate doesn't change. As soon as we in, as soon as we add distance between those keyframes, it's gonna screw with the speed in in a negative way and not necessarily in a negative way but in a way that was negative to what we are trying to do what which is preserve the frame rate right here we don't want this to change we want this to be just like it is right this is our main section all we want to do is affect the beginning here from here to here, we want to happen faster. And from here to here, we want to happen faster. So all we do is we leave those alone. And, and frankly, we don't have to leave them alone. We can grab them both. As long as the distance between them stays the same, then this never changes. Okay, this is always the same. As long as the distance doesn't change. Okay, and, and this makes me think, 
maybe I should get like a time remapping tutorial out or something separate so we could really dive into it and, and understand what's going on. But hopefully you guys are understanding this. What we really want to do is we want to squish this in and that in. And now by changing the distance between them, we're actually changing the speed. So if we squish this in and we squish this in, now we have nothing. It's, it's at frame zero until here. And then it plays from here to here very quickly and then slowly and then quickly. So let's go way overboard just to show you. And let's just do a render from here to there. So very fast and then slow and then fast. Fast, slow, fast. Okay. If we go into our curves, you can actually see this happening. It is fast, you know, uh, 10 seconds per second. This is, is the way it's showing. And then it goes to one second per second, which is real time. And then it goes way up to, you know, like 15 or something seconds. Or so 13. Instead of having it linear like this and just stopping, what we want to do is ramp it. So what I could do is grab this frame and kind of tweak it and grab it and pull it down so it's matching. Once it's matching, I know that when it comes to rest, it's going to come to rest even with the current time. So all I did, again, was grab the handle, pull it down, and pull it over so it kind of ramps in. So now it's going to go really fast, 30 seconds per second, all the way down to one second per second. And then we're going to do the same thing over here, which is ramp out of it. So it's going to start here. And then now look at the difference between that. Now it's not a, now it's not a sudden change. It's actually a big ramp down and a ramp back up. So watch it again. So we're going we're gonna to go fast out and fast in and normal real time okay so that's that's the time remapping so if we go back to our our original um, or the, the original comp that I did you can see um, if we just solo that section this is what you get so that's our time remap and then it slows down and then it ramps out boom okay so that is the first thing I did. The other thing I did was add, um, no, I didn't add uh, Real Smart actually to this layer. Because of the, because of the uh, time remapping, I actually added uh, Motion Blur a little bit later. So what's the next thing I did? Uh, uh, I added, uh, oh, this is where the Motion Blur is, right above it. So now I added Motion Blur, which means as it's rotating around, it's getting really blurry because it's flying very quickly. And then when it slows down, it gets a lot less motion blur. And then uh, as it spins up again, we get a lot more motion blur. So that uh, is just real smart motion blur, basic, you know, no vector output, nothing crazy. Just It's just reading the actual data of the render. And uh, it gives you a little, couple little wonky frames there at the end. But we're going to see those weird ones. But we're going to mask that stuff with uh, all these lens flares, all this crap. Uh, not lens flares, but like glows and stuff we're going to do to the scene. Anyway, so... What is next? Next is a little bit of a kind of a glow coming from the upper corner. Now, this glow is actually responsible for a lot of the blow out of the of the lens there. So in and out, it's really blowing out the scene. And what all I did was animate its um, uh, global brightness. It's an LF glow. It's part of the Knoll uh, uh, light factory. And uh, so this has just got this nice kind of cool glow. I think these are the original colors. And it's just giving it a little bit of atmosphere and a little bit of dust and stuff to the scene. So sometimes a little bit of glow will work like a little bit of dust here. And then we pop back out. So from there, um, uh, the next one up, let's turn that on. The next one up is a little glow over here. So now we have a little glow here. And it's also, I think, animating on and off a little bit to pop, uh, pop that to white a little bit. Up next is a white solid and this is just to fade off to the end so what i wanted it to do was just go to white and then just stay on white so i just added this white solid it does nothing until the very end and it just pops on next thing another solid and it looks like another glow and this is our subtle really subtle little orangish glow coming from over here so this is just giving us that little kind of amber color over on the edge and these go a long way again um, all these little touches are these little 10% things that you could add, little two 10% things that all combine together to hopefully make it look a little bit better. Up next, we have a levels, which this is actually um, uh, our vignette. So this is only darkening the corners. 
uh, and it's um, just adding a little bit of vignette to our scene just to kind of uh, p squash this brightness here and to kind of focus in. The next one is our final curves adjustment. So you can see that's a pretty heavy curves. You can see the S curve here, We're just kind of adjusting the, the brightness and the darkness. And I also pulled the uh, hue and saturation down quite a bit. You can see without it, these laces were getting kind of blown out to red, especially with this orangish kind of a glow out front here. By toning that down, um, that was actually uh, just pulling back that saturation. I think it was just that red that was bothering me. So now you can see, let's um, unsolo everything and just go back, which, which looks the same as everything not soloed. But I want to show you the before and after. So that's our output, right? That's our our render out of cinema, which which looks fine uh, until you see all this other stuff. So again, you know, compositing and getting it at least into Photoshop or in After Effects or getting it into a place where you can do your final composite is so important. Thanks again for watching everybody. And hey, if you want to supercharge your Cinema 4D learning, head on over to our website and check out our Intro to Cinema 4D series. Love to see you over there and just overall thank you for watching these videos. We have Plenty more of these here on YouTube and over at our website at grayscalegorilla.com. We've been making these videos for over eight years now and we just love training. We love making tutorials. So thank you for watching this whole thing. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope to see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody. So this tutorial brings me back to Chicago, 2005 when I did some graphics for the White Sox. And uh, some of my animations ended up on the Jumbotron inside of the stadium. And uh, they just so happened to win that year. So I don't know if it was the graphics. Uh, it was probably the team did really well. That's my guess. But uh, I loved doing those sports graphics back then. That was fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.